Okay, so Master Mason, no, coming at you here. Uh, starting over at Tompkins tomorrow, 7.30. Um, pretty common knowledge. I'm going to be a little bit sensitive on some things. Obviously, I don't know their full set, trend set up. I know it used to look like. I know they got a few machines in there, and that was like 10 years ago since I was in there. And, and obviously, I got, a, I got a lot of card going on. Um... But I like to talk about the resume. I know this is going to go double and tap. I, I knew I had some of this on the plate, but I was talking to somebody else about a resume, so you get that video before this one. Um, and, and this ties into it, obviously. You know, you're going to write what you write on the application for things. Um, what you did, and obviously those are limited. It really depends on the application and how much information you cut down to the resume. And then there's the reality of can you do that. First thing is right out, you got to have that interview. So I had one today. Good guy I worked with before he trained me back when I was. He didn't specifically, but there are other foreman manager that's been there, anchored to that place for years. It's been one of the guys that cut my teeth. Um, I've been down there with their yard dogs and stuff like that. Some of them are roughly my age, and they've been around the mountain for a long time. They've they've trained and worked with a lot of guys that I've worked and done stuff with before. You know, there's you know just a bunch of guys I know offhand. I don't really want to give out names, but you know, if you know the neighborhood, those names are gonna be for the age, the caliber, category for what they're doing. And, uh, and some of them been there still since I left, and that was 10 years ago, and geez, they had, they had 10-year chefs before you get in. And it's hard to argue, and like I said, it's it's one of the first places where you watch them, yeah, just bang it out over some stuff, and see how it goes. Uh, and obviously that gives you hidden some play. And for me, again, I, my big thing is a lot of people don't have the kind of build-out that I have. I'll take a McDonald's terminal, and I'll take that and train you to be a Sawyer. Always white, white. Overnight. If you had that ability to push those buttons, and essentially the same button button pushing is necessary. On well, for the old saws, it was F11, F12 twice. That's whatever bacon cheeseburger. You know, as soon as you make that connection, that that button is F11 for what the program is, they all X. Um, and, and you get onto that stuff in the ground, burning blocks, base setups. You know, those are all. F11 programs, okay. I need to have my, my station laid out into a veneer load, if a veneer created an EM field, the 12 footers, a janky rock setup, so I gotta have additional pallet setups in there. And that's barring the rock before you get it in there, it's obviously loading the bays. It's programming the cuts, you know, if you have different blocks set up front to back, you do an inch in the back, two inch out front, some veneer, 18, something, you know, you're trying to make eight foot. The 12 foot, 24, two inch, me, got 10 footers forever. You got the rock. You got the rock, I'll burn it. Yeah, it's slow on those 10 footers, unless you've got good rock. We're going to take off this cap right here, we're going to finish letting the water come on out. Uh, you know, mechan like you got screw bolts, blade changes, you want me to change blades out, you want me to give you a serviceability line count on if you're changing out blade chops. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things you'll see in the stone. That's the thermaler spot, you know, when you're out there, it's going to grade your, your cutter, it's going to grade your rock. Because that's the finish and you're always doing your recuts on the on a tread line like that with its pallet setups around rollers or after the rollers, before the rollers, your edge tap, you know. It, there's some fine reed stuff that obviously can slide through and you work with. It's like that would be me, me cutting it. When I get that result through, I might try to do that and see if, see if that one kind of slides through in the order as your finisher and you tap in and do edges. If you're doing tapping edges, here it's having your red pen handy for the cutbacks. So they just don't, if they're set back, it's pretty obvious that they're cutbacks. Some way to properly manage that stuff. Obviously, if you're working with blocks and you're burning blocks with the Sawyers, try to figure out what they're doing, obviously, because you don't want to max out your job for what the system is until the timeline really does that. And obviously, touching expensive machinery is. Uh, Not until you've had at least one person of the proper caliber with the proper authority tell you to do uh, so. Yeah, you really shouldn't. You just don't grab a guy's shit because they don't show up or do nothing on yours. There's plenty of other stuff clean up. If 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 gravity defines that to be the number, and then next time when it comes over, you shrug your shoulders, you say, I will. But you don't until. Um, All right, then. <laughs> 
So uh, Kevin and I are going to climb up there. I don't get paid psychology yeah, time. Pretty much. Well, they all contract. Any contract. You know, it's just the big one there is that the main reciprocal is in front of this saw, uh, in front of this. And Sawyer's, it's this whole area, but your main function is is of that subset in there. And then you write all that subset down. They follow very specific timelines. We have 10-footers that are adjusted. And if over time you ramp those down, they follow very specific mechanical timelines. Why didn't that factor do something between the quarry and track and everything? I mean, that's all the same schematic when you run in the face. You know, what's in there? What am I digging out? Is it worth it to continue down that? That As a thermaler, though, you don't have that luxury. You have to finish out the lot and then make the determination and quotes halfway through that if the block needs to be more block, less block, is it close to that block, then you're negotiating pallets, is it all one quarry, one type of order, one color, and try to match it the best you can to finish it off, but you always want your full count first, you want to run that off, and if at all possible, some way to prep separate that, unless you're running out the saws, and then it's about how you load those saws, it's about you want to invert that backwards before you put it in there, because it's going to lock you up, and you want that shit at the end of the day after the premium hit is done, and if you have any extra, you want that on the back end. Maybe save a couple uh, premium pieces that are real good. You know, save those off to the back end so you know you get the hit. Run the shitty stuff first, depending on where you are for that. They make very specific fields. When I have an offset entropy to the, the mill being locked out, you have to adjust that and then make sure that you compensate. That's your visual or rational number to say, you know who's about to roll in. We'll see what we got. Here we go. You know what this is. And because those are all local maps, and some of them overset, and then you realize, wow, this wasn't just the Hancock map, this was this was the cemetery, man. The holy ground around here. Uh, you know, and that's going to track through. I mean, at certain places, I mean, you know, over Augustine, the volume is different. You can sort and grade five buckets of regular that might come right close to 2,000 pounds, which is going to be real close to a pallet. Now, whether all of that makes it consolidated in there once it hits the pile, you get five of those, five of thins, which is two or three pallets of thin pallets, but they're garden path in there, and they break down very differently, so it's about one, one, one of each of those, the way it's consolidated and regraded, you have veneers, usually you're going to get it, hopefully one of those a day. Uh, a pallet of garden path, a pallet of garden paths, at least one. Somewhere's in there, you probably going to sort through a bunch of heavy wall, you're running six buckets of uh, uh, hydraulic splitter, and maybe making a pallet of all in one day. You know, and that correlates to a value. Let's say the value is $20 for somebody to come in as a stacker and just do stacking. You get that faster because it's faster to just kick it in the bucket than it is to actually correlate it and stack it. But in that same rotation, I'm making more pallets plus doing skid steer, dumping dumpsters, and chicken pa chicken wire and pallet scale houses, writing numbers down, working inside of that. You know, and that really kind of gives you a determinative value to what that day is adjusted. And you do the same thing with any one rock that passes you by. This is the reciprocal. It carries a weight. You do that at the standard model of the concrete pillars and uh, steel pillars in the room by saying that's what somebody did here. And you start to look at them as a person. Now, no offense to that person. But let's, let's assume most 16-year vets are pretty good at what they do. They have some kind of sociable, symbiotic relationship with that place. And listen very carefully to what doesn't get done on the top end very via what they make. Now, this is not something that's given to you. You have to earn this information in some way, shape, or form. But at the point you perform at the same level, they kind of hand that off to you, and it's like, damn, if I get that, you know, if, if that goes sideways, kind of leverage and gravity in the world that you kind of depend on that other person to be in there like that, starts to bracket that off, and you have to make that decision as a person for time, or adjusted, or how you go about renegotiating your work contract, you don't need to make these time fraud cases and work fraud cases. You'd be amazed as a manager or an employee how you can handle this information right then and there. And if things
things get sideways at that point in time. A lot of times. I mean, you could sue anybody for anything. There's a lot of places in the company where I probably would have won it if it was on the jury for what it was. But then you have to look at the guys that are fucking in there, especially them 70-year vets, 70-year-old dudes out there in a the stomp pile doing the same fucking job as me. It doesn't matter if I made twice as much rock as I mean. You know, and then you have to think about what that correlates to when they don't, and while you do, what they were and how that correlates to at the top end, because you're not worth it. You're not going to program their saws. I mean, it gives you a big advantage, their saws, their torch line, their setup, until you're worth it, until you find your biometrics for your height, your weight, what stones you can pick up, because some motherfucker was in there catching on the back end, running eight foot, two inch, eight footers by hand. You know, with air crane, quick as shit, you know, what's the setup, the, the small micro, and then, then it's a lot easier. You know, you're not struggling as much, it's half the time with a rock in your hand, and it's a lot easier. But it's hard out front. And a lot of jobs work like that, and you can negotiate what that is off of it, but basically it's all the same flubal crank. You can have a shovel in your hand, move a pile of dirt here to here, eight hours a day. You can push this button for eight hours a day. You can push this button. Need to walk over here, do something else, turn on this thing, which is essentially pushing the button. But they all balance out to do the same thing. A pile of rock, blue stone against gold nuggets, you gotta add a little different. Rock piles to the value of how much that's worth will add differently. And on the ground that that's on, you don't just hire anybody, do some stuff like that. So it's one of those really important critical notes that you have to do things. And when you are like this, camp out. You're good. Just camp out there. Know your local resources. That's exactly where I want to be. It's exactly where I want to be for the time being while I'm planning my director of information technology. Spend the next five years smashing everything in the face, crushing the mountain down to nothing until everybody knows. You see that whole mountain, this one dude right here. You don't walk through. You good? You're going to find out. We'll be on the same team or we ain't. Tell me something. And you will. Now, hopefully, that's your lever. You know, on the workforce program, crew training, that's something I can't stand because I've been crowbarred before. For one, it's a it's a good job. And it's not something I take lightly, especially in the Brotherhood Command conduct, work rules, laws on this thing. It's there. You got any problems with that? You take it up with me. We, me, you, and any other problem. Because, like I said, one of the best ones are Donnie snatching me up. He like grabbed me up, pulled me in the office with the rest of the crew screwing around. And guess what? We figured it out. And now that's one of those setups. When I recognize that monster on that Ketter map, tread map, landscapers map, I go out. I take it out. Catch you on the next one.